Hey everybody, today I'm sharing with you the easiest way to turn your photos into paintings, pencil drawings, or whatever you want. Then I'm going to show you how to create an action in Photoshop that'll totally speed up your workflow. Don't forget to watch all the way to the end because I'm going to share tips and tricks to help you solve problems that may arise and also help you get creative with your painterly photos. Let's go have some fun. So just in case you have not done so already, you can find the beta version of the new Photoshop in the beta apps in the Creative Cloud uh, shop there. So it shows up as Photoshop beta. If you are subscribed, all you gotta do is click install and then you kind of have to sit and wait however long your system takes. So take a nap. Anyway, so click open. Now you can drag and drop or go to file open in order to get your images into the program. However, if you are a Lightroom user, you can launch this program from Lightroom in order to maintain your usual workflow. You just have to do this one time. So you go up to your preferences, you go to external editing, right there it is. And you click on the Photoshop beta for your Photoshop version. So just remember that when you are done working in beta, if you want to go back to working in the regular Photoshop version, you got to go through that again and make sure that your external editor is regular Photoshop. Okay, so once you've got Photoshop beta installed on your system and you've gone through the preferences and made sure that you can launch it from Lightroom, then you can keep this as part of your workflow. So I'm going to edit this image in Photoshop beta. I'm going to go ahead and edit copy. All right, so first I'm going to show you what you might think you need to do and why it doesn't work. So I'm going to hit uh, Command A, which is just a select all. And I'm going to type in here oil painting. Okay, uh, clearly not what I wanted. And I mean, not a single one is what I wanted because selecting all means that I am letting the AI do 100% of the effect and have no communication whatsoever with my original image. So let's, uh, let's just not do that. Okay, so we're going to do a quick mask. So you can just type the letter Q, or you can come down here to the quick mask icon. So it says edit in quick mask mode. So just type Q. There we go. Nothing really happened except that my background layer turned kind of a red color here. This is going to make this super easy. So I'm going to say edit fill. So I want to fill this layer with a color. So I'm going to select color and I'm going to change my uh, brightness level here to something like 20 to 30%. So here's the kicker though. So if I go 50%, so that's 50% gray, that's going to be a lot. So let's do that. And I have to, I have to exit out of this. So you can either click this button again, or just type the letter Q and I'm exiting out of it. So now I've got the generative, generative fill available here. So I'm going to type in oil painting. Okay, so we're headed in the right direction. You can see that it at least recognized the log, um, sort of. <laughs> so 50% is a lot, but that's for the oil painting. Let's try watercolor at 50%. Watercolor painting and click generate. Okay, watercolor painting at 50% is also overkill. This is just way, way too much. Okay, so I'm going to try this again. I'm going to click on quick mask and I'm going to say edit, fill, Make sure we're doing a color. This time I'm going to make sure that we've got maybe 20% in here. So that's going to be a darker mask. So the darker this is, the actual less of the painterly effect that you're going to see. So 20%, which means it's going to be a redder mask. Let's type Q again and let's do generative fill, oil painting. Okay, that's better. It's a little goofy. That one's a little bit better. 
not loving that one. So I like that one. It's going to give you a whole bunch of choices here and you can click on generate again here in the properties panel. If you don't see your properties panel, make sure you go to window and click on pop properties to bring it up. So what if I want to try 15% or 30% or 10% or something like this? Yes, you have to go in and do another quick mask. So quick mask, fill it. So say I wanted a 10% mask because I just want a little bit of painterly feel. Click OK, Q again, generative fill, oil painting. Click OK. Now notice it's creating another generative layer there. I didn't have to add a layer. It's doing all of this automatically for me, which is nice. And it's also giving me a layer mask, which we will talk about here in a second. All right. So that is, let's turn off this layer underneath. And so here is, what did I say, 10%? And so there's, those are your variations. Now watch something, I want, you, I want you to see how this works. So I've got a mask and let's just remove, I'm gonna do 100% of it just so you can actually see it. So I'm going to remove the effect essentially by brushing it out right here. Okay, so I'm going to do another interpretation. So I'm gonna let it generate again. So I, in order to do that, I have to make sure that the generative layer, not the mask is clicked. So I gotta click on that and I can come back in here and let's turn this into a watercolor painting and then click generate. Okay, so this applied a very light watercolor effect to everything except for the snails. So notice that, okay, that all of these are going to affect everything but those snails. Now, why does it do that? It does it because I still have the snails masked out. So no matter how many times I do this, whether it's watercolor painting, oil, uh, sketch art, whatever it is that you want to apply here, if you have removed the effect from part of the image with this mask and you wanna do another prompt, that mask is still going to be applied. So it's every single one of these is only affecting the background. This is a great way to add some texture to your background, maybe a slightly different look for it. And something else I wanna point out, let me go ahead and fill that mask with white so that we make sure that we are back to normal there. Okay, something else I want to make note of is that this is just a layer with a layer mask like any other layer in Photoshop. So you can lower the opacity of it. You can change the blending mode. So if I wanted to use darken or lighten, maybe overlay for just an interesting different look, soft light, something like that, it's going to apply that watercolor effect to different areas. So let me go back to the oil painting ones here. So this one's a little bit more serious. And so if I do darken, lighten, you can see how it just adds a touch to it, depending on the blending mode. So treat this like you would any other Photoshop layer. You've got the ability to mask portions of it out. You have the ability to change the opacity and the blending mode, all of the above. But keep in mind that once you start affecting the mask here. So I wanted to say remove 100% of the effect off of the snails. Now normally I wouldn't do 100% because I want the whole thing to look like an oil painting, but I come back here, click on that, and then cycle through the different looks. Again, it's just changing everything but those snails. Isn't that fun? All right, now say I want to try a a 10%, a 20 and a 30% on the same image. But I don't wanna to have to come in here and do the cue and edit and change the color and then change the number in that color for every single one of those. That's annoying, especially if you're going to be doing this a lot. So let's create an action to make this easier. So let's just, for simplicity, let's just get rid of these things. All right, so I'm gonna come over to actions. I have already created an action set. So what I'm doing is I'm, I created a folder called AI Painterly. And so I'm going to create all of my painterly actions and put them all 
in this set. So if you want to create a new set, you need to click this button where you create a set, name it something appropriate, like I did here. Okay, so AI painterly effects or something like that. And then you want to create a new action. So I'm going to create an action and I'm going to put it within that set. So it's going into AI painterly. And this time I'm going to say mask at 25%. All right, so we'll do a 25% mask. And then I click record. So everything that I'm doing from here on out is being recorded as part of this action. You can see that because it's got the little red button right here. I just want to record up to the point where I've created the percentage and that way I can do the different AI prompts as, as many as I want. So I'm going to type the letter Q for the quick mask. I'm going to say edit, fill with a color. And I'm going to say, what did I say? 25%, 25% and click OK, click OK, type Q and then click stop. Okay. So what that does is let me back up in my history here so that we, let's just go back to open. Okay. So I'm going to come to actions. So I'm going to click on mask 25%. Click on that, press play, and now all I have to do is come in here to the generative fill and type oil painting or whatever it is that you want. Okay, so there's my 25% oil painting, and here's multiple choices, and I say, well, I'm not really nuts about that. Let me try the 15%. So I click on the 15% and I press play, and I come in here and say oil painting. So 15% looked uh, a little different than <laughs> 25%. So if I wanted now uh, watercolor, and there's my uh, watercolor choices. Okay, so I just wanted to show you real quick an example of when the that mask comes in really, really handy. Okay, so here I have uh, an image of an oyster catcher, and so I went ahead and did a generative fill with a watercolor, but look what happens to his foot. <laughs> okay, his foot disappears. And also, let me turn that off again, watch what happens to his eyes. Let me go ahead and, and zoom in on this for you so you can really see it, what happens to his poor little eyes. Okay, they look weird. <laughs> All right, so having that mask, all right, so I'm going to take, I'm just going to, again, do it at 100% so you can really see it. So I'm removing 100% of the watercolor effect from this part of the image because I want to bring back his foot, bring back both of his feet, actually, okay, so that I can see that portion of his photo. So here's the mask for that. I brought back his eye and his feet. And when I go through, now watch his foot as I scroll through all of these different variations that I did. Okay, with every single variation, his eye and his feet are completely fine because that mask is on every single one of them. So no matter, no matter how many times I come in here and change whatever is, this is, pencil sketch. Generate. So I'm going to get three more choices here that include pencil sketches. Again, his feet and his eye will look totally normal. Okay, and so here are the three with the pencil sketch. And that mask stays true for all of them. So this is really handy between that and the opacity changes and things like that. It's very, very handy to be able to bring back details that are very important to you. So like right here, his wing disappeared. I might want to bring that back. Kind of important there. Going to my actions, creating another masked layer. Okay, this time it decided to keep the foot. Yay, and there it decided to get rid of the foot and create a drippy beak for whatever reason. So yeah, you're going to get, and that looks like an ibis beak all of a sudden, but anyway, so you're going to get a lot of variation. So let's turn that layer off so we can go back to our regular ones. 
So when I have the variations listed here, um, I have to be on the layer that contains those if I want to go ahead and cycle through all of these variations. So when I'm on this layer, I've only created three variations with the, uh, the oil painting prompt there. But on here, the last thing I'd said was pencil sketch. And this one was uh, oil painting in the style of Monet under saturated. So you don't have to just put one or two words here. You can write entire phrases. If you want to uh, select a background and just replace the entire background with a watercolor painting and leave your subject, you can absolutely do that. So let's go back to uh, open here. And I'm going to say select subject. Very good job, thank you. And I'm going to say select the inverse. And I'm going to just do a straight up generative fill here of watercolor painting. Uh, let's see, watercolor painting seashore. Just for kicks. I have not done this yet, so I have no idea what's about to happen. <laughs> oh, there we go. So it's a completely random but again i didn't do the quick mask here and that's very important to understand i didn't do the quick mask so this just selected the entire background and created a watercolor painting at the seashore so uh, it doesn't really look appropriate for this situation um yeah but you know it could work for, you know, adding textures to your photos. You can just type in whatever kind of texture you want in the background and enhance your images that way. So this really does have just kind of unlimited possibilities as far as uh, creativity. You can, you can shoot for the stars with this one and, and just enjoy yourself. But understanding the basics of it, understanding how to make it work with your layers and the masking and the opacities and your blending modes is going to make a big difference. And adding those actions is gonna be a huge time saver for you. So you guys have fun and I have a full length introduction to Photoshop layers class available online that is very, very good, starts out with the very basics. So if you want to get into this type of experimentation, but you really don't have a grasp on layers, I highly advise uh, go ahead and get that video so you can really understand how all of this works. So more than anything, you guys have fun.